Welcome back to GS with RB. In this video, we will discuss the important news of the Hindu and the PIB. Let's begin. The very first news related to economics. The Indian GDP growth rate has increased to 6.3%. The Indian GDP growth rate has uh, raised to 6.3% in, in the second quarter of the current financial year. This news is significant because of the two reasons. The first is that uh, from, from the past two quarters, the trend was on a declining trend it was on a declining trend but in this fiscal uh, it has increased up to 6.3 percent so this quarter has shown india a you know, positive sign to the its economy and the second significant thing is that in the worst quarter after demonetization and gst it showed a negative declining trend so many experts were saying that the declining trend is uh, because of the demonetization and GST. So uh, now the it can be concluded that the effect of GST and demonetization has gone off, and uh, the economic activities which registered uh, the growth of more than six percent in quarter two was actually were man manufacturing first, and then electricity, gas, water supply, and then other utility services. Uh, the GVA is. Uh, the gross val uh, value added uh, it includes the product taxes and uh, it uh, omits the subsidies uh, gva is actually plus uh, gva is actually uh, the gdp plus subsidies and from that uh, we have to deduct the sales and taxes direct, uh, direct sales and taxes so this in this includes the gva uh, so let's look at uh, the following items there are eight core industries and that is coal crude oil natural gas refinery products fertilizers steel cement and electricity the data here is given of the october month of the last year and october month of the current year uh, if we see if we see the coal uh, it has shown a increase in the production from the last year and uh, the cement has shown a declining trend because in the last year it was 6.2 percent now it is in a negative negative zone that is minus 2.7 the report of industrial uh, iip is released by cso so we must know about the cso what are the roles and functions of cso so index of industrial production is on uh, the iip this is compiled by CSO that is Central Statistics Office. It is the published every month and it collects the data of every month and so and it explain their uh, downward or increasing trend of the eight core industries. Uh, it covers 865 items. Previously it was 682 items. Previously it was 682 items and in the new series it covers 865 items out of which manufacturing is 809 items in the new series while in the old series it was 620 items mining is 55 items electricity one item and the weight of three sectors are the mining sector the manufacturing sectors has the highest percentage we should not forget followed by mining activities electricity also the base here for the new item for the iip had changed to 2011 to 2012 from 2004 to 2005 so the new base year is 2011-2012 and uh, earlier the base year was 2004-5 the, there are eight co-industries as we already know and uh, they comprise they compromise they comprise nearly 40.27 of the weight of the total items and uh, they are basically coal crude oil natural gas refinery products fertilizers steel cement and electricity and the very important thing here is that the electricity has got the uh, highest share in the list followed by steel refinery products crude coal cement natural gas and fertilizers generally upsc asks questions about the 
decreasing and increasing order of the eight core industry so we should keep in mind about these facts let's move to next news item next news is related to ncrb ncrb is actually national crime records bureau which which publishes uh, the report of the crime happening in the city and it uh, and it compares the rate of crime happened in the last year to the uh, crime rate of crime happened in the present why it is in news because ncrb has released a report and it and according to the report of ncrb there is an increase of 2.6 percent of the crimes in 2016 compared to the previous year and uh, out of the states uttar pradesh has recorded the highest number of heinous crimes such as murder and the those against in those against women in 2016 also it is very important to note that for the very first time that ncrb has included a data on the seizure of fake indian currency uh, so this is significant and also around 40 percent of the fake notes were seized from delhi so delhi has got 40 percent of the shares of in the in fake notes which is followed by gujarat also delhi reported 33 percent of the total crimes against women followed by women and uh, followed by the women which is at 12.3 percent so delhi is the most uh, crime city against women in the country so ncrb is actually uh, gives the report of the crime happening in the city uh, so let's uh, let us know some more points about what is ncrb and when it is set up in our country NCRB was actually set up in 1986 and it is responsible for collecting and analyzing the crime data which are defined under IPC Indian Penal Code. So NCRB is a government agency and which was set up in 1986. And the headquarter of the NCRB is in New Delhi and it is and it is the part of Ministry of the Home Affairs. Government of India, and the function uh, of NCRB is also a repo also is that it acts as a repository of information on crime and criminals, so that it helps in assisting the investigators in linking crime to the perpetrators. So let's move to the next news, uh, which is related to foreign trade policy, two thousand fifteen to two thousand twenty. In the foreign trade policy uh, the news is basically that the government is going to uh, take a review on december 5 that is a mid review about the foreign trade policy which is in progress from whose duration is 2015 to 2020 according to the policy the india had india has targeted the 900 billion dollars of ex exports of goods and services in financial year the center will announce on December 5 its midterm review of the foreign trade, foreign trade policy. And uh, what is the aim? The aim is that to focus the expected to be on the policy which measures the boost which will which will boost the exports of goods and services. And it will also increase the employment generation and value addition in the country. Uh, the most important does the main aim and the government will um, put more focus on the on the small and medium uh, enterprises and labor intensive seg segments because these are the driving forces in export from our country uh, the move comes at a time when latest data shows that the goods exports rank by 1.12 percent in october to 23 billion dollar so our export has declined in recent times and in october it has declined to 1.12 percent i already have told you that the ftp for the period 2015 to 20 had set a target for india's export of goods and services to touch 900 billion dollars by financial year 2020 and uh, we should not forget that Directorate General of Foreign Trade which is responsible for 
FTP implementation. Let's move to next news that is related to Project Swan. The Project Swan is uh, uh, related to the Indian Railways. It was launched by Indian Railways and whose aim is to to renovate the India's premium trains like Satabdi, Rajdhani. Uh, the what ha, what is happening right now? The condition of the premium trains like Satabdi and Rajdhani are deteriorating with the time. So, uh, Ministry of Railway has launched a program that is Project Swan, which will which will aim at renovating these premium trains. Under the under the project, what Indian Railways have uh, focused and planned that they will focus attention on 10 key areas they have identified the 10 key areas in which the project will work on like punctuality whether the trains are coming on report on are coming on right time or not uh, on cleanliness on the bedding system like linen clothes linen and uh, coach interiors toilets catering staffs uh, etc so let's move to next news which is Lesotho. Lesotho is a place in Africa and why it is a news because India has donated 500 metric tons of rice to the kingdom of Lesotho because they in Lesotho they are facing a acute food shortage because of famine. So we should look at the location of Lesotho in the world map but I repeat once again that Indian government has donated 500 metric tons of rice to the kingdom of Lesotho in southern Africa because they are facing acute food shortage due to famine. Uh, so the location of Lesotho in the African country is is in the south and it is in South Africa country. So UPSC could ask these type of questions about the location of the location in the world map so let's move to next news that is related to namami gange mission so what is the context the context is that the indian corporates and uh, nris and pios in uk they have committed that they will give more than 5 million dollars for the development of amenities like ghats river fronts and and crematoria and parks as the part of the Namami Gange mission. These people, uh, corporates, NRIs and PO, PIOs will give the five billion dollar. And this and uh, the announcement came in came in the effect came because of that that uh, Nitin Gadkari, who is the minister of water resources, river development and Ganga, rejuvenation, road transport and highways, was in London and it and there he organized a road show regarding the cleaning of Ganga. So let's look at some more facts about the Namami Gange mission. The very first thing is that for the very first time in 2015, the government has started the Ministry of Water Resources, River De Development and Ganga Rejuvenation. Their government basically set up a separate ministry and department for Ministry of for water resources, river development and Ganga rejuvenation and uh, the, with the objective, the objective of the ministry was to clean and protect the Ganga river in a comprehensive manner and also we should not forget that Namami Gange, Namami Gange mission is basically 100% centrally funded project. The project Namami Gange mission is also known as Integrated Ganga Conservation Mission Project. The, it will cover eight states and twelve rivers. Uh, the ministries of Environment, Urban Development, Shipping, Tourism, Drinking Water, and Sanitation and Rural Development are coordinating with Water Resources Ministry in this the project. So, Namami Ganga Mission is a very big project for which. Uh, the various ministry are engaging themselves and coordinate, coordinating with themselves for a better and uh, comprehensive workout for the cleaning of Ganga. The Namami Gange mission includes the various type of activities starting from local people participation, from river surface cleaning, uh, from river front development, for conservation of the biodiversity. It also includes the processes like afforestation 
public awareness, industrial affluent monitoring, and Ganga Gram. What is the Ganga Gram? Ganga Gram is that government has identified a five states for uh, around which they will work uh, from where the Ganga is basically flowing and the in and the and in the Ganga grams government will focus on these objectives and uh, like river front development, river surface cleaning, afforestation and conservation of biodiversity. So let's move to next news that is. Uh, related to uh, International Tourism Mart. International Tourism Mart is basically a basically a event which is planned and scheduled to facilitate interaction between buyers, sellers, media and government agency. The International Tourism Mart is is uh, happened because under the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India and uh, it is stated from 5 to 7 December and it is being held in Guwahati, Assam and the, also one important factor point is that it, it, it is being held every year in the northern eastern state. And so this is the last news we discussed and thank you for listening. Thank you.